Guns and Conservation in America Much has been written about the gun in America, and who would wonder why? Persuasive, provocative, and protective, the gun is akin to a religion in the United States, and few can stand outside its trajectory of influence. Indeed, the gun has had a profound impact upon both the historical and the modern American mind. Explosive at times in its power to incite reflection upon the true nature of American society, the gun is perhaps more powerful as an idea than as an instrument of lethality. Like a watchful ancestor, its imagery is everywhere, calling to mind remembrances of things past and helping shape the mythical and historical narratives that have forged the nation's identity and its sense of purpose. Yes, like it or not, fear its symbolism or extol its practicality, worry about the gun as a symbol of erratic violence, or trust it as protector of self and home, it is difficult to dismiss the near mythology of the gun in America. Of course, the gun has also, to a lesser extent, influenced the historical narrative and cultural imagery of America's northern neighbor, Canada. Consider, for example, that we cannot envision the move to the frontier in either country without imagining the bold adventurer cradling his firearm, the iconic symbol of his self-reliance and capacity to forge certainty in a world of unpredictable challenge but certain peril. As the narrative goes, mountain men and fur trappers drew civilization across the vast expanses of an unknown continent, and no one questions that their relentless and essential ally was the gun. Indeed, it is a remarkable instrument. Since its earliest invention in 14th century China, the gun has had almost immeasurable influence upon the march of world history. It has decided the fate of rulers and of nations and empires. From local rebellion to world war, the gun has been the predominant instrument of engagement, the decision maker for the reality on the ground. Within this wider context, the gun in America may be seen as an idiom for the nation's relentless march to influence, its delivery vehicle for the inevitable reality that the nation's reach would extend far beyond its borders. Indeed, can we not draw a direct line to the very independence and ascendancy of the United States of America, the greatest global force of change and influence history has yet offered us, from the entirely improbable defeat of the world's greatest army by backwoods marksmen, men who learned their shooting skill in the hunting of wild food, the defense of person and property from predatory beasts, and yes, the immensely regrettable clash with the American Indian. Surely the gun has had influence. That we must accept in defining America, past and present. In discussing the right of the citizenry to bear arms in both the United States and in Canada, we must realize that this right underlines a relationship between government and people that does not exist everywhere. Having an armed citizenry, after all, implies a great level of trust between the state and its citizens. Indeed, often the very first evidence of a dictatorship is the effort to remove from the citizen the right to legally bear firearms, a certain indication that the trust between state and citizenry has been lost. As significant as I believe these aspects of the gun issue are, I also recognize the grave realities that surround gun violence in America. It concerns us all, I believe, and rightly so. In fact, I can honestly say that I have never encountered anyone who is indifferent to this problem. My purpose here, however, is to emphasize that gun ownership, as guaranteed by the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, has had enormous influence, indeed a founding influence, upon the wildlife conservation movement in North America. Indeed, without a citizenry knowledgeable about, capable with, and legally supported in the right to own and use firearms, the great and enormously successful wildlife conservation movement we recognize as the North American model would never and could never 
have come into existence. And nor can the model persevere without a citizenry entitled to bear arms. Wildlife species were everywhere depleted in North America in the late 19th century. And it was indisputably the hunter-conservationist movement that led in their rescue, saving many from certain extinction. This reality has largely been ignored in the debate over gun ownership, and understandably so considering our focus has and should be on the human tragedies people are inflicting upon one another. But from my perspective, a debate about gun ownership is not complete without considering the valuable conservation mechanisms we have in place because of gun ownership. To trace the great North American wildlife conservation model with all its social and environmental benefits to the notions of freedom and liberty essential to American society is to understand why this unique approach to conservation evolved where it did and to appreciate why gun ownership, so symbolic of freedom everywhere, is so central to the conservation debate in the United States of America and in Canada. At the same time, it ought to make it clear why the conservation and harvest of wildlife is such a critical force to ensure gun ownership is protected and maintained. It is impossible to know the history of North American conservation and fail to appreciate this truth. Hunting is critical to conservation, gun ownership to hunting, and all three things to one another. The legal harvest of publicly owned wildlife, guaranteed to be equitably governed for and by all citizens, is intrinsic to both the rescue and preservation of wildlife abundance in North America. Only with a citizenry comfortable with the use of firearms could a broad-based participation in wildlife use and conservation have evolved. It is precisely because of gun ownership that sustainable wildlife harvest by the public could have been instituted, and it is precisely because of this that the North American citizen expects to have a say in how wildlife is managed. It is also because of this that the hunter-based organizations continue to contribute so much financially and otherwise, to North American conservation. This engagement is critical to the future of our wildlife. The alternative of wildlife conservation being the expensive burden and responsibility of government only would be a disaster. Legal gun ownership and conservation go hand in hand. Despite there being almost as many guns in America as people, wildlife thrives. And it does so because the armed citizenry agrees to abide by the laws of conservation, seeing themselves as both architects and mechanics of the process of conservation itself. Debates over gun ownership and hunting will rage, yet perhaps too few of us realize the complex histories of these founding institutions, and even fewer have any notion of how both have been and remain essential to North American conservation. Leadership in defense of Second Amendment rights and in defense of hunting should not be viewed as entirely independent efforts, at least not where wildlife conservation is concerned. Rather, they both represent a striving to remind our citizenries of our past, of how we came to achieve such extraordinary conservation success, and of how, in this sense, the historic guns of liberty and the guns of conservation are, in reality, one and the same. Eliminating either would limit the other and irrevocably limit both our freedoms and our conservation achievements.